This is a port filter. This is a group head. And when they come together. Where are you going with this? I was going to talk about the coming together of disparate elements, each with their own beauty, to form a beverage that will sustain you through the difficulties of the morning. Nobody wants to listen to that. You're not a philosopher, you're a musician. You just happen to like coffee. Well, I've started, so I'm going to continue. No. No, no. You've had your two minutes of fame in the last video. Now it's my turn to narrate the voiceover. Hello everybody, and welcome to the latest video. Today I'll be disassembling this coffee machine. Stay tuned. So I start by giving a little background information on this machine. Um, my buddy sent me a classified ad right before Christmas uh, with this in it, and it was for sale at a distillery in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Now the guy had had it for over 10 years and started to work on it, um, but never got around to finishing it. And funnily enough, I live in Winnipeg, and he said that he got the machine from his brother in Winnipeg. So it had traveled from Winnipeg to Saskatoon, and now it's back. So getting those two panels off was relatively easy. Um, nothing was stuck, and everything is in surprisingly good shape on the inside of this machine. One of the first things I noticed when I looked at the back of this thing is it has a mercury switch as a water level sensor. The switch moves back and forth and I'll show you a little bit more how it works uh, later down the line in the video. Um, because the guy that I bought it from had attempted to restore it, everything was in really decent shape and none of the bolts were really stuck at all. This is a close-up of the water wand. It's not in as good a shape as the steam ones. The lever, for whatever reason, feels really loose, whereas the other ones feel relatively tight. I'm imagining that I'll have to rebuild part of it, although I've heard that parts are really difficult to find for that, so we'll see what happens there. Um, otherwise, everything was really easy to take off. It's not very many problems. Uh, here's the steam wand that I'm taking off right there. I'm hoping to get into the wood shop at some point and make custom uh, walnut levers for these things. And so at this point, I'm just removing the last bit of pipe that's connecting the groups to the boiler. And this type of machine is actually a heat exchanger. So you can see those three large circular pieces on the top of the boiler. Those are actually pipes that run through the entire length of the boiler. So that way you can have pressure to steam milk and also to have uh, hot water that's not scalding your coffee. It's an interesting design. Now here you can see this is the pressure stat on the side. It's an old Sarai and uh, I'm kind of concerned about the state of the wires on this thing. They look kind of burnt uh, going up to the heating element and the rest of the wiring is like pretty crusty looking. Lots of exposed bits and stuff and lots of things that were disconnected. You can see that here on the three-way solenoid on the back of this thing. So it'll be a bit of an adventure trying to get that to all come together. Let me see if I can email Electra and get a wiring diagram. And I just flip the machine around and start working on the front. You can see the three tubes going out of the group head. That's from the three-way solenoid to relieve extra pressure from the group as you're making the coffee. Um, two of them are in pretty good shape and one of them is cracked. So I don't know if I can fix that. A buddy of mine does brazing and he might be able to fix it, but I'm not counting on it. Um, otherwise things are just kind of dirty. And you can see on the far right, um, the group is very shiny in comparison to the other ones. And that one's actually cleaned up and polished. I guess the previous owner had decided to work on that one and didn't get around to the other ones, so I guess that's my job now. Here you can see the bottom of the heat exchanger. There's two pipes going in, so one is the cold water, and I'm assuming the other one's like a circulation thing to keep the temperature of the group head more stable. 
Although I spoke to someone at DeLuca's here in Winnipeg, which is a, you know, an Italian food store that sells coffee machines as well. And he said that with these things, uh, you have to do a lot of temperature surfing to get the temperature of the coffee right. So it'll be interesting to see what it's like when I actually get it running. Now, all the bolts on this machine were really easy to get off, except for these ones coming up right here. And you'll be able to hear right now. On the other machine I had restored, I actually had a couple bolts break on me, and it was an absolute nightmare to try and get them out. I remember there was one that was stuck in the lever group, and I can't remember, I think I had my friend weld a nut onto it, and we had to, like, bust it out. It was a, it was a disaster. But the other problem is that with, you know, you're talking with brass, you know, the metal is so soft that fixing, uh, repairing threads is just, you know really dicey so i try and be careful when disassembling these things because you never know what you could end up breaking that's basically unfixable so now uh is the last s couple bolts actually to remove the boiler so uh, it was a bit tricky to get them all but i managed to do it you just bear with me here just a little jiggle here and there But as you can see, it's like quite clean. Just a bit of staining from the descaling process. The other thing I'd noticed is that the gaskets are seem to be new on the boiler and uh, on that mercury switch at the back there. Just taking the bolts off and I'll show you the inside of this thing. And this is how the float switch works. You see that float in there? You just lift it up and down and it triggers the switch. So here I've got the heating element from this machine and another one I had kicking around. And you can see the one from this machine is pretty bad. Now, uh, that was filmed about a week ago and now uh, I had to come back another day and because I live in a frigid wasteland, it was necessary to wear a hat and a coat in the garage because it was minus 30 out that day. Uh, at this point, I'm just removing the whole electrics. So the switches came off pretty easily. It's just a couple of couple screws and uh, the control box looks okay as well. Um, it's got a bunch of, bunch of 600 volt switches in it for each of the groups that's attached to the solenoids. Um, and this, the switches control the solenoids on the group heads and the three-way solenoid at the back to divert water to either the heat exchanger or the boiler itself, whatever. Uh, and yeah, here's all the electrics gone out of the frame. Now it's time to remove the pump. So this is called a rotary vein pump. Uh, it's got a big motor on it and the pump pressure, I believe, is adjustable by the speed of the motor. Um, and there's also a sticker on the back of that pump that says it had been serviced somewhere. So it looks like the pump has been rebuilt at one point. So I'm curious to see what state that's going to be in. Now this is the last bit of, uh, that's the drip tray actually. Act well, there's no drip tray on this machine. Uh, I'm going to have to get one made. And thankfully I know someone who can do metalworking, so shouldn't be too much of a problem. And now, here's the dramatic last piece. So I thought I'd end with some B-roll of the parts that I had taken off. As you can see, they're kind of worn looking, but that's about it, really. I mean, cos cosmetics are kind of subjective, and maybe I should leave the patina. You know, let me know what you think in the comments. But I'm hopeful that everything will come together because I've got someone here in Winnipeg who knows this machine inside and out and can get me some parts. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. Um, maybe it doesn't feel like I got a lot done in the past two weeks, you know, taking this whole thing apart, but I do have two kids and a full-time job, so I guess it is what it is. Uh, this upcoming week, I'm going to try and descale the heating element, 
test to see if it works with a multimeter. Um, start working on the electrical, get some gaskets. Maybe that's too much stuff. I'll, uh, I mean, I'll see what I, I see where I get. Uh, in any case, I will see you in two weeks. Thanks. Wait, you'll see me in two weeks. I won't see you, whatever, it doesn't matter.